In this video, I'm going to provide an overview for using the Tracer 3D Visual to render exported three-dimensional Revit element data within a Power BI uh, report dashboard environment. Um, the sample data I'm going to be using is derived from the kind of basic advanced sample model um, inside of Revit. Um, what I did here was I simply opened up the model. I went to the uh, proving ground tab and found the tracer exporter um, and I filtered my selection to just the room objects just for a very fast and lightweight uh, tutorial and so this tool is aimed at producing the database file which Power BI will connect into and draw the information from. So inside of Power BI what I'm going to do is go through a couple of setup operations. The first thing I need to do is reference my data source. So I'm going to go to the get data tab and and once I have uh, get data open I can go to ODBC. Um, ODBC is the protocol by which we're going to connect to our exported SQLite database file that Tracer produces. I'm going to go ahead and hit connect. Um, and once I'm in the ODBC um, uh, get data environment here, I'm going to go to the data source name and go down to SQLite uh, 3 data source. And then under advanced options, I need to uh, connect to my file. Um, so there's a very simple string here. I just type in database equals, and then I need to um, provide a path to the data file that I've exported. So you can see here, I've got my sample 3D project rooms. Um, I'm just going to simply shift right click and go down to copy as path. I'm going to jump over here and paste that in. And one thing I want to do is make sure I eliminate the quotation marks from the front end end of that string. So I'm going to hit OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to connect in to that database file. Um, it might take a few seconds here, but what you'll then be presented with is the ability to select uh, which information you want to pull from. And you can see that we have uh, element listings, parameter listings as tables. Um, for this exercise, I'm simply going to use the room elements view. Um, this uh, view takes all of the room elements and their parameters um, that were exported um, into a single tabular view. It makes it for uh, very easy access uh, to this information. So I'm going to hit load. And what this is going to do is it's going to connect into that database and it's going to bring over the resultant um, room element listing um, and it's going to be exposed to us as a set of fields in Power BI when it finishes loading. Um, the fields tab is where you uh, do all of your kind of um, uh, database or your kind of data access um, and you know, provide uh, visuals with the information that they need uh, to kind of you know, calculate and, and, and display information. So now that it's loaded, you can see that we have the room elements table and we have a variety of different fields to choose from. And this is indicative of the parameters that are assigned to room elements. Um, a couple of key ones that we'll want to pay attention to is that we do have an element mesh field um, and we do have uh, basic information about the, the room in terms of what level it resides on and um, the name of the, the element, the area, um, and so on. So now that we've referenced in this data, uh, what I can do is now bring in the uh, Tracer 3D visual. Um, and the Tracer 3D visual, again, is about rendering three-dimensional information within the Power BI environment. So you can see that under visualizations, there's this ellipsis, and you can say import a visual from a file. And so um, when you import a visual from a file, you can see that um, because I've been using this folder a bit, it took me directly to my visuals. Um, when you first install Tracer, uh, the Tracer visuals will appear under Documents, uh, Proving Ground, Tracer. And if you have a trial installed, you'll see that you'll have 3D Visual Trial. These are watermarked visuals. Um, you can see there is the 2D version as well. Um, so these are kind of trial-based and, and watermarked. Um, when you license either the 2D or 3D visual, you'll see that there are some um, non-watermarked versions here that you can use um, and produce reports with. So I'm going to use the Tracer 3D visual. I'm going to go ahead and open. And when this um, visual imports, uh, you'll see that we have a new uh, visual here that we can select from under visualizations called Tracer 3D. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click that. And I'm going to activate an instance of that visual here. Maybe what I'll do is also resize it 
um, a bit uh, so we have uh, something that we can actually more readily see and view here. So I'm going to start populating this with some information. And what we'll see is when you have this visual selected, uh, you have um, the ability to import um, and insert fields here. We have a, a categorical field. This will kind of control how the visual is co uh, colored and kind of what basis by which uh, you know the, the elements should be colored, similar to like a Power BI chart or, or or other visual. Uh, we do have some color override fields, so if you have a color listing that matches up with your categories, you can use that. Um, geometry um, ID um, and also geometry or ID for highlighting are the two most crucial bits here. Um, this is how we're going to render our geometry. And then we have the ability to assign fields for tooltips. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply go over to the room elements table under fields and I'm going to drag and drop element mesh into geometry or ID. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, process that information and display for us the three dimensional uh, room information that was stored in our Revit file. And you can see that I can uh, zoom in and out with my mouse scroll wheel, a pretty conventional way of zooming uh, in three dimensional environments. If I right click, I can rotate. Um, if I shift right click, I can pan. Um, I can also, um, you know, uh, use left click to pan as, as well. So uh, pretty uh, conventional three-dimensional navigation, but now this is being rendered within the um, Power BI environment. So this is just a uh, kind of a, a white uh, model. Um, if I wanted to colorize these objects, these room objects, um, I can start to assign a category uh, color here. Um, and one way that I can do this is say like, well, maybe I want to color these objects uh, by the room name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find under room elements here, the name field and add that into category. That's going to reprocess the results and we now have uh, our rooms uh, colored uh, by way of their uh, name. So all of the kind of orange ones here are instructional um, rooms, um, you have lobby and, and so on. Um, another step that I like to do is um, ensure that we have um, element mesh represented in the, the highlighting category. Um, it's important to do this because what it'll do is allow this visual to interact with other visuals on the, the dashboard report. Um, so if I select a pie chart that represents a certain name, um, it will cross filter and, and do all that kind of fun stuff. Um, tool tips are also um, important here where and if I want to have the room number displayed, uh, for example, um, I, can, I can do that. And now if I hover over any of these objects, um, it's showing not only the name, which is the kind of category, but it's also now showing the number. Um, and I can have a um, kind of a growing list of, of tooltip options here. Um, when it comes to like being able to customize the, the, the visual, um, there are ways to start to override colors. So if I go like any other visual, if I go to the format tab, you can see that there are a number of rendering options. Um, if I expand this, if I want this to be kind of orthographic projection, um, that'll make the, the view um, kind, of a, a kind of a parallel orthographic view as opposed to a perspective. Um, there are also some shading options. By default, you get a shaded view. Um, if I wanted kind of more of a flat uh, shaded view um, that doesn't have like the um, uh, kind of the indication of you know, shading of faces and if things just sort of more of a flat kind of diagrammatic view, you can do that. Uh, we also have a soft shadows view, which has the sort of ambient occlusion, you can see some softer shadows um, hidden in there um, and it really makes some of those objects pop uh, quite well. Uh, those, are, those are available as, as some options as well. Um, I find the most performative one tend to be like shaded and flat. Um, the ones where you do soft shadows, if you have very large models, obviously things like frame weight and rate and stuff like that take a hit um, as well. So um, a couple of other things to note is that you do have the ability to override your data colors. Um, if you would like, you can see that there are some pre-assigned ones, uh, but if you wanted to override them with some different colors to match other visuals, you can. There's also a couple of ways to do this where you might want to just introduce a single bottle shade or a gradient, which kind of gradates between uh, two colors um, based on the uh, selected uh, categories. Um, so that can you know, produce some pretty nice effects. Um, 
So, you know, that's that's kind of a general overview of these settings. You'll know, we'll probably have a more detailed tutorial just uh, to kind of uh, share uh, how how you might you know really customize uh, this view. But it's important, I think, to know that those are there. To get an idea of how this visual responds to other Power BI visuals, what I'm going to do is create a new slicer. Um, the slicer will allow me to start to filter different objects out of this view um, based on a kind of category set. And what I'm going to do with this slicer is simply drag the name of the rooms over in as the kind of slicing field. And what you can see is now I've got a list of all the, the different room names. Um, so if I click instruction, what this is going to do is it's going to filter the three-dimensional view just to the instruction rooms. So you can see that we've got those highlighted here in orange, um, and these are all named instruction. And if I, I can start to do the same thing with some other categories here, I can jump over to lobby, for example, and that's going to activate the lobby. Um, and maybe I can even you know, start to do lobby and instruction. So now we can start to see the relationship between those kind of blocks of room elements here. Um, pretty straightforward stuff um, and also pretty powerful, I think. Um, in just a few clicks, we now have kind of cross filtering on a 3D view. Um, what I'm also going to do here is maybe just create a uh, kind of stacked uh, column chart uh, in the corner so we can start to see how that interacts. And I'm simply going to take the name as my axis and I'm going to maybe do a count of objects. And so what I'll do is maybe count by element ID um, under values. And now we're getting kind of counts of, of different room types. And so again, if I click on instruction, what that's going to do is it's going to um, fade out the other room. So it's a little bit of different behavior from the slicer. Um, it's fading out the context and just highlighting those, those rooms that are instruction. And I can do the same for electrical. Um, and it'll reset the visual. Now we have a number of electrical rooms that are being highlighted in there. So kind of different effects, and of course they can be mixed and matched. Um, so if I wanted to, you know, highlight cafeteria over here um, and grab the kind of instruction, uh, maybe library and lobby, um, now those are selected in the filters. And then if I click on instruction, um, it will again uh, fade out some of that context and, and just show me. Um, the stuff that I have selected in my um, bar chart. So very straightforward uh, setup. Um, in just a matter of minutes, we have uh, three-dimensional um, uh, objects being displayed in Power BI. They're responding to some different visuals. Um, if you want to get an idea of some other uh, uses of this, we can um, jump over to the documentation site. And the documentation site has a number of three-dimensional dashboard examples that you can uh, load up and, and try out. We also have some templates you can download um, that have some of the stuff pre-set up. Um, but, you know, for example, here's an example of doing a very similar set of workflows, but with uh, some structural elements. And these are Power BI report files that have just been uploaded to the Power BI cloud. Um, so our visual does display in WebGL 2.0 enabled browsers um, and are quite responsive um, based on, you know, what your, uh, uh, based on, you know, different three-dimensional uh, graphics card settings. But we find that we found that these are, you know, pretty responsive and uh, very capable of, of delivering three-dimensional models within a browser, a compatible browser-based environment. Um, the interactions are there. I can select elements. I can um, you know, uh, activate filters on them, and you know they all just render in the browser, uh, browser uh, with very little work. So um, hopefully this overview is helpful, just as an introduction to how one sets up a Power BI dashboard with our Tracer 3D Visual, um, and uh, we hope you uh, enjoy these uh, new tools that we're putting out there for uh, for rendering this information.